Hi guys, thank you so much for loving my prison story video. That was really sweet. I do want to touch more on Jodi Arias. I know I dropped that and skimmed by that pretty quick. I was in jail with her. I did not talk to her. We never said any words or anything like that. My heart goes out to everybody that has been affected by prison, jail, addiction, drugs. And shout out to everyone who has gotten their life together and turned around and shout out to everyone who's getting their life together right now. Shout out to everyone who doesn't have their life together right now, but thinking about getting their life together right now. At least you're thinking about it. Shout out to the people who don't have their life together and they're not even thinking about getting their life together. You will. I am going to do my best to stay in order of the story. I wanted to say thank you to everyone who understands that this is hard to talk about. Look at it. I work myself up so much, but I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Now, I left off, I believe, I was just about to hit my yard. We have to run and we have to go back to jail because there is a very important person in this story. I would have had a way more difficult time if I did not have her. I would have to go to medical a lot because my blood pressure and my anxiety was just out of control. Now medical, medical is very, very interesting. Like when I was in my pod, there was no other women who, you know, killed anybody or anything like that. If you are going down to medical, you're going to be crossing paths with every single person basically in the jail. Let me paint you a picture. It's a cement cell. There is a tiny little vent with maybe like 10 little holes right in the middle of the room. Just one, there's only one. There is no toilet. There's no toilet. Why the f if there's no toilet? You're gonna be there for like six to eight hours. I don't remember how long the longest time I was there for. Did I mention there's, there's like 10, 20, maybe sometimes 30 women in there screaming their heads off? They don't give you deodorant. Did I tell you guys that? I didn't have deodorant for a whole entire week. And you can tell that a lot of those women did not have money on their books. No, a lot of people don't have deodorant. And when you get us all in there and there's one little vent and then there's this, I'm claustrophobic. Okay, this isn't working for me. I was really doing good. I was pretty tough and then I I sat down, I started losing my mind, basically. Everybody's screaming and smelling and farting and there's no toilet. The lady officer that's sitting at the desk is such, you're a bitch. I don't care. She would always pick on me about my about my appearance. I did not have eyebrows. I drew them on. I had just one line. It's actually a tattoo. I got my eyebrows tattooed before I went in thinking that that would be a good idea because my eyebrows were like non-existent. Now, you can't tell it's underneath my hair. So I, I have real hair now, which is incredible. I never thought that would happen. I do have to put a little concealer right here. So I don't know. I'm hoping that one day I can get that fixed. It's not too bad. Thankfully it faded. Cause she would always pick fun at me and she'd be like, what's wrong with your eyebrows? Oh, here comes no eyebrows. You're there to do a job. You're not there to bully the inmates. You're projecting. That's what that's called. It's called projecting. You're projecting and everybody can tell. I'm feeling very overwhelmed. Like I'm about to jump out of my skin and my body's tingling. I'm having a panic attack in the cement cell with all of these stinky women who won't shut up. You can picture it. It was horrible. I'm thinking about it right now. It's giving me anxiety. <laughs> I mean, we are almost shoulder to shoulder. There are girls sitting on the floor, sitting on the bench. Like there's no room. I sit down and I'm like, I was gonna have a heart attack. Girl sitting next to me saved my life. Actually, I think she was on this side. <laughs> she nudges me and she goes, you're right. And I go, yeah, honestly, no. She goes, count backwards from 100. That's not gonna work. 100. 99, 98, 98. I don't remember what number I got to, but I stopped and I go, oh, it did work a little bit. And she was like, cool, what's your name? And I was like, Brandy. And I was like, what's your name? And she was like, Dasha. <laughs> I, that's what I called her. And that's why I like, I like calling her that Dasha, but her name is Tasha. We hit it off right away. Now going down to medical was kind of exciting because maybe Tasha was gonna be there. We just became best friends very, very instantly. Just felt like something meant to be, you know? So, all right, let's fast forward to being shipped off to prison. I can't believe this happened because Tasha had been waiting waiting a while for her stuff. I got put in this holding cell, which I was fine with now. Now I'm fine with, put me in the holding cell because I'm going out of this place. I can't wait, go to, go to prison. They're gonna ship off other girls to the prison. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna be shipped off with somebody cool. Tasha was in the freaking holding cell.
what? I'm like, put me in the holding cell. No, then they put you in another holding cell and another holding cell and another holding cell and another holding cell. You're basically in a holding cell all night. Remember the, how I told you guys I had to be in that cold holding cell for three whole days and didn't even sleep and it was like driving me insane? Kind of happened again. It was cold. It was annoying because you don't know when they're going to let you out. There's no clock. There's no nothing. We were, I think, pretty sure it was like 24 hours or something, 48 hours. I don't know. I don't know. A month? I still don't know. That's how confusing it is. We finally get onto the bus. Nothing really interesting there happened. We already went through RNA. This was the funny part when we were going to RNA. Oh my God, do you think we're gonna be in the same cell together? And she was like, I don't know. And she goes, don't worry if we're not, you're going to be in the cell with somebody who is of the same charges. So don't worry. Because there were girls that were going to the prison that did some pretty bad things. And I asked her, I said, well, you don't think I'm gonna be part of with them, do you? Huh? No, 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 no. They look at their charts. They made a mistake. I remember when we had our one hour free time, she goes, how's your selling? And I go, not good. So she had a girlfriend. There was a little bit of a stabbing situation. And she also told me that I reminded her of her girlfriend. I was so happy to get out. I would just be complaining, not complaining, but just like, well, you should have seen the shit she took yesterday. Common courtesy flushes. This is what those mean. If a little turd plops into the pool, you flush. Even if you're not done, you hear a splash, flush. She didn't do that. She wasn't a common courtesy flusher. Did I mention it was summer? Hot. The beautiful thing that happened, we both got called to our yards at the same time. You know how I told you, when you're on RNA, you're waiting to be processed, to be put on whatever yard your charges match up with. Every single day, they weren't calling her name or my name. If they wouldn't call my name, I'm like, they better not call her name or my name. It's just vice versa. We don't want to leave each other, okay? It's really good to have a good friend in there. Someone who you can actually trust. Who, if they give you a cookie, won't expect you to give you your cookie back to them. And I'm not talking about the pastry. That was such a confusing mix-up on, on everybody's part. We both get called are you kidding me i felt like i was on the prices right i started jumping up and down and screaming like a damn fool what does this mean that means we go have our breakfast and we pack up our stuff immediately there is no waiting so we get into the truck and we're driving to our yard i'm not even nervous they broke me okay they broke me over there how worse can it get it can get worse. I'm not gonna be in a cell lockdown anymore, 23-1. We're gonna go to an open area. We have a yard, a track, benches, workout equipment. Not really. There was like this push-up thing. I think there was things missing off of it. You're going to get off of the truck and you're going to be going through to get packed down and stripped down. You gonna get naked. You get naked a lot when you're in jail in prison. I have something on me, I'm hiding something. I'm hiding something on me that I took from the jail and it is my chapstick. I know, I know. I had it right here in my armpit. <sighs> Look, I'm thinking ahead. You're not gonna have any store. If you have any store from jail or anything, you can't bring that to prison. You gotta start anew. I put my chapstick which I think it was actually hair grease. It was actually really good lip gloss. I took a piece of plastic from one of my bags from Jill and I put it inside there and I twisted it up, I kept it stuck in there or underneath my tongue. I cheeked it. Anyway, I could, I didn't want to have chapped lips, you guys. So we get to what's called, I forgot, what is it? The warehouse. It's where you get your clothes, your, your oranges. The whole time you're in RNA, you're wearing a jumpsuit, an orange jumpsuit that Velcros. Taking that on and off is ridiculous to go to the bathroom. I will never wear a romper because of it. They give you two pairs of pants, a couple orange shirts, everything's orange. My socks were white and then I washed them with my oranges, which turned them pink. <laughs> I wasn't really mad about that, you know what I mean? Like we need a little color in our lives. The boots look like they're made of leather, but I'm pretty sure they're made of metal and wood. They hurt so bad. Back of your foot, this by the end, no, by the end of the day, four hours wearing those boots, you're gonna have no skin on the back of your heel.
period. You're gonna wanna get yourself some shoes off of your commissary immediately. There was no amount of toilet paper or anything you could stuff behind there to make your foot feel good. Also, I wanted to note that I was a smoker. I smoked cigarettes. I do not smoke cigarettes anymore. I don't know how many years it's been since I smoked a cigarette, but it's been a long time. I hadn't smoked a cigarette in two months and I wanted to quit so bad. I, I always wanted to quit smoking cigarettes when I was smoking cigarettes. It's a very, very difficult thing to quit, but I'm really happy I did it. And I encourage everybody to do it. Please do it, you can do it. But there was a lady who was rolling cigarettes for all the new girls coming out of the yard. Very old, old lady. And I'm pretty sure I asked Tasha, is it okay if I accept that? And she was like, yes, <laughs> because you know, you have to be careful with what you accept. So I took the cigarette. I was like, I'm not gonna smoke it though. I'm just, I'm just gonna take it and just like, hold on to it. You know, maybe I can sell it for something. Perfect. We get on the yard and the first thing we all do is light up and smoke. <laughs> But it made me very dizzy and it made me very, very sick. So yeah, I started smoking again. Everybody on the yard is gonna know that you're new because you have an orange jumpsuit on. You're sticking out like a sore thumb. <laughs> Thor, sore. I have a little piece of paper showing me where I live. I lived in pod A, a hundred girls in there. And I believe the yard fit 600 or 800 girls. Somewhere around there. We're both in the same pod, so that's really cool. Beds, beds, beds. Just like sections of, you know, kind of cells, but it's open. It's in an open room. It felt so good to be in such an open place. I was in such a cramped area for such a long time. It's quiet. It doesn't smell too bad. It still smelled. When you go outside and you would come back into the pod, farts. Farts. Oh, God. And depending on what they were serving us, too. There is an officer area, arena, or what? It's the officer area where he sits, his computer, and all of his stuff. Tasha is just right over there. We can talk to each other like, and um, make each other laugh during count time when you're supposed to be quiet because that's what best friends are supposed to do. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. My bunkie that was on this side was a complete bitch. When I get to my cell area, I put all of my stuff away. It's just very quiet. There's nobody's talking, nobody came up to me. Everybody's basically sleeping. At nighttime is when it gets rowdy. Both of my bunkies were asleep. My bunkie lifts up and she goes, oh, hey, you're new. And she scared the shit out of me. She says hi, she introduces herself. You have to remember that yes, these are women, but they are also now convicted convicted. She just started talking to me about her other bunkie and how she used to give her food. I know that it's hard for me to pick up on certain things. Why are you telling me this information? To me, it makes me feel like I'm expected to give her some of my food. You also want to order a padlock so you can lock up your locker. I got my store and she said, she was always asking me for food, always asking me for food. And she two for one, this other girl that was like, you don't want to owe this girl. And she owed her so much. When I got my padlock, she asked me, she said, hey, let me have your number so that way I can keep your stuff safe. <laughs> She's trying to hug You can't hustle me. I gave her a weird look and she goes, what, you don't trust me? No, I don't trust you at all. And you shouldn't trust me either because we're both in prison. There were good times with her. I will tell you, there were good times with her. She was a moocher, you know, she was a moocher. That's what she was. So my other bunkie that was asleep, she was so mean, right? We did not like each other. We did not get along. We butted heads all the fucking time. We would exchange words sometimes that you would be shocked that I even said. She would come at me. It was crazy. And I would go to Tasha and be like, dude, I fucking, oh. and she'd be like, that girl, you know, like, yes, that girl got it. She intimidated me in the beginning. She did. She scared me. I was nervous around her. But when you live next to somebody for so long, you start becoming desensitized to their bullshit. <laughs> I wasn't afraid of her no more. And she could tell because I was standing up to her. This is where we started to become friends. I hope you're doing good. I love, I love this girl. I really do. I've never had somebody take that long for me to become their friend. There was this girl who had an issue with me because she had a girlfriend or this girl like liked her or whatever and that girl likes me. I'm so sorry, but I promise you I was not interested. There is what's called a day room. Day room is just basically, it's right in front of where the officers are. There's a big 
window and there so you can see you can close the door yeah it's just a room with a table and you can go in there and play cards and uh dominoes i was telling tasha and i was telling other people i'm like yo i'm having big problems with this girl i don't know what to do somebody told her i was talking shit i wasn't talking shit i was explaining what i was going through and then i needed a solution to fix it talking shit would have been like oh she's such a punk bitch blah 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 blah, blah. no I didn't do that. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> oh my God. So picture this. It's at nighttime. We're locked down. Nobody's allowed to go outside anymore. And you know, you can always feel when something's gonna happen when you're in prison or jail. She calls my name and everybody's head turned. I turn around. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, can I help you, girl? She said, I wanna talk to you in the day room. I'm like, okay. But the funny thing is that she has two other girls with her. You're trying to intimidate me. You don't need to do that. I'm already intimidated. Cause I actually can't fight though. You know what I mean? I don't want to, but I don't want to, but I will, you know? When somebody asks you in an aggressive way to come into the day room or into the laundry room, there's usually going to be a fight. I'm thinking that we're just gonna go in there and by ourselves. Actually, now I'm thinking she only had one girl with her. She might have only had one girl with her, but she was like a big girl. Like, what are you having this girl with you? Can we just talk about this by ourselves, whatever the hell it is. This has caught everybody's attention. I'm nervous that there is gonna be a fight because the officer that was working was a cool officer. There were certain officers where you could do stuff and certain officers where you couldn't do stuff. Like this officer, you could fight somebody in the shower and he would never say a word which is dangerous. It's very dangerous. I'm walking in. I remember Tasha's right across the way. Tasha grabs my arm and she says, you're not going in there with anybody. She's going in there with her. If you need me, you look at me. I'll be in there like that. She was ready to jump over the wall and get into that room to come to help me. Just look at me and I'll be right in there. I was ready to get down. I was, I was ready to get down. I mentally prepared myself to get hit in the face and to hit somebody else in the face. But then when she was walking in with this other big girl, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I can't fight both of you. I just lean up against the table that is in the day room, ready to listen to your woes, Missy. What's going on? What's 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 paining you? I'll tell you what's paining me. The freaking time I have to do. What's going on with you? Is it important? Because I don't think it is. She goes, very... <laughs> I heard you have my name in your mouth. <laughs> I heard you have my name in your mouth. You need to keep my name out your mouth. I said, I can have your name in my mouth if I want to. That was my response. How can you argue with that? You need to keep my name out your mouth. <laughs> and then she just stormed out with her girlfriend. That was it, I won. I won, right? That was a winning fight. I'd say your name again, but I don't remember it. <laughs> that wasn't like super duper duper exciting, but my hard core bunky, she hits me in my shoulder. I thought we're about to fight. I, I can't, please. Give me five minutes. I just almost had to do that over there. You went in there all by yourself. You didn't have to go in there by yourself. You could have had your girl come in there with you, but you didn't. You went in there by yourself. That just gave me so much respect for you. I was like, so all I had to do was say somebody's name, have them come up to me, tell them not to say their name, and then walk out of the day room last, and then you'd love me? We could have solved this whole issue a long time ago. My bunkie goes from not liking me to now we are very cool. So cool, in fact, that on a Friday, Friday and Saturdays were our party nights. Everybody stays up later. Everybody's making snacks. You know, store was on Thursday. My nose is pierced, right? To keep my nose piercing open, I took, well, that's weird that this is sitting right here. It never happens that easy. You get little combs like this. You don't have a brush in there. You just get, this is what you brush your hair with. And it's not this big. You think it's that luxurious? No, it's this big. So you take one of these, bend it off, and you just stick it in your nose or in here, and it just looks like a blackhead. But so she goes, your nose is pierced. I've always wanted my nose pierced. Okay, well, you should do that when you get out. And she was like, no, I want it to be pierced right now. Do you, what are you telling me this for? Do you need me to come hold your hand? She says, no, I want you to do it. I want you to pierce my nose in the laundry room. Okay, hold on. <laughs> So my nose is pierced. <laughs> I should add that I did pierce my own nose myself at my house. I told her that and that is why she asked me to pierce her nose. We are not in a sanit- There's no sanitation. Like this isn't the best place to do that. You know what I mean? Well, what am I gonna pierce it with? And you can get anything you want. And 
I wouldn't have been, been as surprised if she pulled out a tattoo gun and was like, pierce it with this. But she pulls out a tack, a thumbtack. She gives out a thumbtack. I go, I go, oh, oh my God, you want me to do that? To you? Are you sure? She goes from hating me to now I'm going to be like up in her face. I felt very honored because that woman had been burned by so many people and that is why she did not like anybody and was cold and hard to get along with because the world had been hard to her. So we go into the laundry room. <laughs> I agree to it. What else are we gonna do? It's Friday, you know? Washed her nose and my hands. I washed everything as good as I possibly could. Take her nose like this and then I took the She's so tough. She did not even flinch. I pushed it through and you feel a pop and it didn't go all the way through. And I'm just, you want to have a whew, straight through, right? But I have a, I'm working with a thumbtack here. It got halfway through. I had to let go and she has a thumbtack halfway in her nose. And she's like, oh shit, it's almost there, right? We finally get it through and then we get a little piece of comb and then we had matching blackheads. I'm gonna leave it on this. This was the very first day, our very first day, we're in the chow line and these really like tough looking girls ask me, what are you in here for? Getting kicked off the cheerleading squad? <laughs> Everybody cracking up. <laughs> that was really... That was a good one. I'll give it to you. That was pretty good. I love you with all of my heart. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Mwah!